Hey guys, Josh here, and today we are back on Kickstarter to take a look at another upcoming farming game. If you're new here, I love farming games and I love to take a look at these new Kickstarter campaigns and just give you my first impressions on the game. And yeah, so this one is called Sally. It's a cozy life sim game about community and belonging. You can craft, cook, farm, build and explore to your heart's content in this magical journey of self-discovery aboard a giant flying ship. So that sounds like a pretty interesting premise and they are doing pretty well. There's 28 days left. So this campaign just started about maybe two days ago and they already got close to $27,000 and their goal is 70,000. So I have no doubt they will reach their goal. So that is good to see. And let's just start by watching the trailer. So right away we see the ship and the ship is called Sally. I thought Sally was gonna be a character but I'm getting big Ghibli vibes from this game and I gotta say, I love it. It looks so good so far. Lots of different colors. It looks very lively and I think we're gonna be able to do some gardening on this ship. I don't know if there's gonna be other environments. And it looks like we're gonna be playing as a kid. It looks like everybody's a kid, maybe in this game. So there's gardening, cooking, I don't know if how I feel about how the characters look. However, I'm sure there's going to be customization. Oh, they're speaking. Oh, are they speaking French? It really sounds like French. I feel like I should be understanding what they're saying, but I'm not. Let me just... I just want to hear one more time what they're saying. Okay, I think it's just gibberish. But it sounds, I don't know if you guys have seen these videos where it's like what English sounds like to non-English speakers. For me, it feels really similar to that, but in French, I feel like I should be understanding what they're saying, but I'm not. So anyway, it's just <laughs> very interesting to hear. But anyway, let's just keep going with the trailer. Yeah, the voiceover is interesting. And looks like there's going to be some skill trees, forager. Oh, maple leaf. That's nice. I love the little sound effects. So yeah, here's the character creation. Looks like there's going to be quite a few different options. And I wonder what's the story of this game because everybody's a kid. So I don't know if this is some kind of school. I don't know why are we on this ship. Maybe that's something we'll be able to figure out as we go through the campaign. But yeah, it looks like we will be able to land um, on the land and like go to different places. There's gonna be seasons, I think. We just saw some snow. Maybe some bug catching. There's a shepherd with some cute little creatures. And yeah, it just looks like a very cute game. I think we're almost done with the trailer. Yeah, it looks very cute. Interesting. Looks like the characters speak French, but not really. You play as kids. And I'm getting big Ghibli vibes. So Sally now on Kickstarter. So let's take a look at the rest of the campaign. And oh, they're actually based in Montreal. So maybe that explains the French influence in the voiceover. Maybe it's just the accents. I'm not sure. But yeah, I'm glad to see that they're based in Montreal. They're Canadian, just like me. And let's go down and read the description of the game. Embark on the Sally, a flying ship crewed by kids and stewarded by two caring grandmas. Develop lasting relationships in this unique community. Craft, cook, farm, build and explore your way through a cozy Ghibli inspired. So it was really Ghibli inspired. Help your crewmates reach their aspirations while you all repair the ship. Find your place among the Sally's found family by discovering who you're meant to be. Sail the skies together to get to the ultimate goal, journeying to a faraway land to call home. So, it, yeah, it's really those kids with two grandmas on this ship. I'm not too sure what's the <laughs> purpose. Why are we there? I'm not too sure, but let's keep reading. Relationships are at the core of Sally's experience. Build lasting relationships with your crew. The characters are different in every game you play. Oh, that's nice. Each of your crewmates has their own life, vibrant with emotions, tastes, interests, and even monsters. So it looks like the characters will be somewhat random from one playthrough to another. And you can see there's quite a big variety in terms of like skin colors and also like body shapes. Uh, just like bigger kids, smaller kids. So that's interesting to see. Your time spent together on the Sally influences your crewmates' reactions and moods, develop bonds like friendships and rivalries. 
while getting to know everyone's unique personality and aspirations, watch new connections form aboard the ship as your crewmates navigate their own relationships. So it looks like there's going to be quite a big focus on friendships because that's the very first thing they talk about in the campaign. So I think that's going to be a big part of the game. Every step of the way, the caring grandmas Alice and Beatrix will be there to guide you through your journey. Alice's knowledge of constellations and magic is unmatched. It gave life to the Sally, one of her greatest achievements. This soft-spoken astronomer is a force to be reckoned with. Always available to resolve conflicts amongst the crew, this charming negotiator otherwise loves to spend her time stargazing. And then we've got Beatrix, and she's all about hard work. Her creative mind and building skills were paramount in the creation of the Sally, which she gladly undertook with Alice. Beatrix is always happy to share her expertise with her young crew, as bluntly honest as she is caring, this strong protector loves to tease the people she cherishes the most. So it looks like the personalities of these two characters will complement each other pretty well. One of them is more soft-spoken, the other one is more blunt. So I'm looking forward to seeing how the dialogue is in this game and how they interact with the kids. Next, we learn a little bit more about the actual gameplay features. So there's craft, cook, farm, and build. Nothing new, but let's see if they manage to do something different. So first is farming, you can grow your own food, lots of vegetables and fruits will be available in game. Experiment with them all to cook fun recipes for your crew. So you get a little glimpse of the crops here, nothing, nothing really new, I think it's all something we're familiar with if we've played farming games. And they don't really tell us about the farming mechanics themselves, maybe we will learn more later on, but I'm gonna assume that farming is pretty basic, pretty standard for farming games. Next, we've got animals. Take care of animals like the cute chibisons. Beloved pets make life aboard the Sally all the more enjoyable. Develop a bond with them as you feed, groom, and nurse them back to health in times of need. When you explore different floating island biomes, you will come across a variety of animals adapted to their specific climate. Interact with the local wildlife whilst respecting their wild nature. So I think this is interesting, the idea of taking care of wildlife instead of just adopting the animals like we're used to in farming games. So there's bear, cow, moose, heron. So I'm seeing lots of Canadian animals here and animals that we don't usually see in farming games. So that's good to see. And duck, chicken, snowy owl, and hedgehog. So I like to see this variety of animals. That's pretty cool. Most animals will drop important resources as the seasons change. Deer lose their antlers in winter. Seasonal birds will drop the occasional feather. Hedgehogs shed some quills, craft with these precious resources and help animals thrive. Next we've got gathering. The different island biomes are full of resources to gather, flowers and medicinal herbs, magic gems, mushroom fruits. Visit a biome in an appropriate season to gather the resource you need for your crafts, gifts and quests. So there will be seasons in this game. And as you can see, there's going to be lots of different flowers, mushrooms and other forageables. So once again, nothing really new here. Next, we're gonna get to repair and customize the Sally. Make the Sally your own. This good old ship needs all the help it can get and it's up to you and your dedicated crew to improve it. Acquire parts from merchants, repair the sails, give it a new look with a fresh coat of paint, craft buildings and farm space on its deck. With your help, the Sally will be ready to explore never seen before destinations. So it looks like we're gonna have quite a lot of freedom in terms of customization. So it looks like you can place things pretty much wherever you'd like. And I like this idea of having a home that you can move from biome to biome, island to island. Usually in farming games, you're going to be customizing your house, your farm, maybe the town. But things are not really moving. But here you can move around with your house. So I think that's pretty interesting. And just look at this. Look at how beautiful this ship is. There are so many details. You get to see the sky, the mountains, even little birds flying. As you explore a rich new world, the sky is filled with floating islands awaiting to be discovered. These ecosystems have different seasons, resources, animals, and inhabitants. Journey through ever-changing landscapes and explore to your heart's content. There's a solace to be found in every task and no time limit. Experience the beauty of Sally's world at your own pace. So like in most farming games, there's no time limit, so it should be a very cozy very relaxing experience where yeah, you can just play at your own pace. Here you can get a little glimpse of the different biomes and different seasons that we'll see. Find your path as you search for who you want to be. 
So will the rest of your crew. It will take a village to lead the Sally to its final destination, and to do so, everyone aboard the ship will have to achieve their specific aspirations. Help your crewmates hone their craft and watch them grow to their full potential. So if I understood correctly, I think your character is not going to be the only one who has this skill tree. And pretty much everybody on the crew will be able to get skills and get better in specific field. And it makes me wonder if you can maybe even control the other kids or if you just play as one character. I'm not too sure, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing how that will play. Next, they talk a little bit about the customization. So a pivot point in Sally's experience is the feeling of community and belonging you develop aboard the ship. Many customization elements will be put in place so you can truly recognize yourself in your character. They include body type, facial features, skin color, hair color and style, eye color, and pronouns. You'll also have access to a wide array of clothes and accessories to make your own style shine through. Also central to the feeling of community you'll develop aboard the ship is the people you will develop it with, your crewmates. They will react to you according to their mood, personality, and memories, making every Sally game a truly unique experience. Most crewmates aboard the Sally will be created from scratch with their own personality traits, backgrounds and physical appearances. You will also have some preset characters that you may choose from to be a part of your crew if you so please. So once again, it looks like there's going to be a big emphasis on the crewmates. I think this could add a lot of replay value to the game and I just love to see this because usually in farming games, it's always the same characters for every playthrough. So I love to see that they're doing something completely new here. Next, we're going to take a quick look at the rewards. I'm not going to go through everything one by one, but we're going to take a quick look. So the first one is the early bird. There's a limit of 200. Let me see if there's actually space left for those. There's actually two early birds left. So by the time I upload this video, maybe there's not going to be any, but that's $20. You get the game when it releases a Discord title and HD wallpapers pack for $5 off. Next, we've got the passenger tier, and that's pretty much the same thing, but you don't get the early bird discount. For $35, you can get the early bird crewmate tier, which will give you access to the same rewards as the previous one, but you will also get to play the game during the alpha, and there are about 100 spots left for this one. If you miss this early bird discount, you'll have to pay $40 for the alpha access to the game. So I feel like in terms of pricing, this is pretty standard. I've actually paid a lot more with some other games in order to be part of the alpha, so I think 40 Canadian. 29 US dollars. That is actually a pretty good price for the alpha access. I'm not going to go through all of the tiers, but if you pay $55 and more, you start getting bonuses like prints, stickers, art books. And then you've got some really special tiers. So for $1,000, you can get to create your own outfit. $1,250, you get to create your own dish. 3,000, you get to create a character. 6,000, you get to create an island. So if you're really, really into this game and you want to be part of it forever, you can get one of these perks. But for most of us, I think it's going to be either the $25 for the full release or $40 for the alpha access. So I think these prices are actually pretty reasonable. So I like to see that. I will put the link in the description. So if you guys want to see all of the add-ons, feel free to take a look. They also have some stretch goals. So with 70K, the game will get funded and I have no doubt they will reach this one. With 100Ks, we will unlock Sky Sea Shanties. So it says, join in in some spur of the moment Sky Sea Shanties. When doing daily tasks, your crewmates may start singing songs together to boost morale, sometimes using nearby items as instruments. So I think this will make just the atmosphere of the game a little bit more fun. And then if they get to 150k, it will unlock cats. So you will be able to have a pet on the Sally. And I think the stretch goal most people will be interested in is at 200k a Switch version. That's always the question I hear the most whenever I talk about a farming game on my channel is, is there going to be a Switch version? So if this project gets to 200,000 Canadian dollars, it will get a Switch version and then other stretch goal at 250k, more magic, and 300k is still secret. And I'm sure that if things go well, they will keep adding other stretch goals on top of this. But yeah, I'm pretty sure they will be able to reach at least the Switch version if they keep going at their current pace. But for now, Sally will be available on PC from alpha testing through final release. If the campaign reaches its Switch version stretch goal, as I just said, Sally will be available for the Nintendo Switch. 
This game may also be released on Xbox and PlayStation, although neither can be confirmed at this time, making Sally available on the Switch is our first priority. As a Montreal-based team, we are proud to make Sally as bilingual as we are. The game will be available both in French and English. Bonjour, hi. Since Sally's game core mechanics rely heavily on characters reacting in a wide array of ways, the amount of possible interactions in the game surpasses the scope of usual life simulator. This unfortunately means that translating Sally is an enormous workload. At this point in time, we cannot guarantee that we will have the resources to translate the game in additional languages. However, we would love to make Sally accessible to a wider array of players. Rest assured that more languages will be added during development if it is a realistic option. I like to see that they're really honest and upfront here in a lot of these Kickstarter campaigns. Developers are promising like 8 to 10 different languages, and I know that translation is a lot of work. And when your budget is limited, it's not always realistic to translate in so many languages. So I like to see that they're really going to focus on the quality and make sure that the character interactions are good in French and in English. And then after that, if everything goes well, they will be able to translate it in more languages. But yeah, I like to see that they're kind of trying to stay realistic and very honest here. Next, we get to see their team, and it looks like there's six people working on the game right now. Lucid Tales is a Montreal-based worker-owned studio devoted to bringing positive social impact to the industry. We focus on creating innovative experiences with an inclusive, educational approach to game making. Our cooperative mindset ensures we're using our diverse array of expertise to the fullest, making our humble team of passionate talents a small force to be reckoned with. Every member of Lucid Tales is sincerely excited to shape this project into a unique game you will love to play. So very nice description, looks like a lovely team. I would have loved to see maybe projects that they've worked on in the past or maybe what their roles are. So we know they have six people, but I would have loved to see what is Eva doing. Is she an artist? Is she a programmer? What is Louis? What is Emil doing? I would have loved to see their roles and like maybe how many years of experience they have just to give me a little bit more confidence into backing this project. But nonetheless, it looks like a cool team just from the description and I love to see the little illustrations and next we've got collaborators and <laughs> I think I'm a little bit speechless. I think I've been to high school with this guy or if it's not him, he looks very similar and has the same name, same hairstyle, same eye colors, same hair color, same everything. It's either like a big coincidence and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's such a small world or maybe he's just a lookalike, but I've got so many things flowing through my brain right now and I am a little bit confused but anyway uh, so <laughs> they have three collaborators I'm not too sure of their roles I completely lost track of what I've been trying to say but I'm not kidding I'm pretty confident I know this person and it's just yeah it's such a small world but anyway <laughs> let's go to the next point which is the timeline so the Kickstarter ends November 2022 Alpha in Q1 2024, so if you back the game in the Alpha tier, you will have to wait at least a year before you can start playing. And then Q2 2024 is going to be the early access and Q1 2025, the full release. So for those who are looking for the Switch version specifically, uh, you guys will have to wait a few years, at least 2025. So it's going to be a while. It's going to be a while. And of course, as usual, delays are pretty common in the game dev industry, so it might take even longer than that. And now let's read about the risks and challenges. So they say that transparency being a core value of our workers' cooperative, it's important for us to inform backers and fans about the potential risk of this project. We also want to reassure you that we have the resources and experience to deliver Sally as promised. But as I said, they don't really show what kind of experience they have, so I wish we would see a bit more of that. One of the biggest risks in game development is the time estimation of the different parts of the project. With the experience we have accumulated developing prototypes and finished products for various video game studios, we are confident in our ability to tackle this challenge. Our plan is to maintain a steady flow of communication with the community regarding any delays that might happen throughout the development. The success of the Kickstarter campaign will not only enable us to focus all of our effort into delivering the best experience Sally can be, 
but it will also be leveraged as proof of interest from the community for potential additional financing. Again, the nature of the cooperative ensures that all the funds go towards creating a sustainable work environment for Lucid Details members and thus allowing us to craft better games in a healthy way. It's also important for us to inform early backers and fans that some aspects of the design or art are subject to change throughout the iteration process. We assure you that the core vision of the game will stay the same, but some elements may differ from what you see in the early stages of development. And that is pretty much it. So before we wrap up, I just want to take a look at Lucid Tales website and see if maybe we can learn a little bit more about their team. Welcome to Lucid Tales, a Montreal-based worker-owned game studio. So here it says that they were founded in 2019 and there's a little contact form here, but unfortunately there's no way to see um, what they've done previously. So yeah, as I said, I wish we could see a bit more of their experience, but I'm gonna wrap up and give you my first impressions on this game and campaign. I think the game looks gorgeous. I love the atmosphere. I love the Ghibli inspiration, the fact that you're on this ship and you can go from island to island. I also like how there seems to be like a big emphasis on the crewmates, how the crewmates will be different for each playthrough and hopefully this will really make a difference in how you play and how you interact with the different crewmates. So I think that's an interesting aspect of the game. For the other things, I think maybe the cooking, farming, animal, all of that stuff seems maybe a little bit basic, all things that we've seen before. So while I don't think Sally will reinvent the genre or anything like that, it still has a few interesting ideas. I think that if you're into the style and the Ghibli inspired world, it might be worth taking a look at. So once again, I will leave the link to the campaign in the description. Feel free to take a look at it and let me know what you think of Sally. Have you backed this game already? Are there any specific things that you like or dislike about this project so far? Please let me know all in the comments. Leave a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this on this channel. And I'll see you all in the next video.